Last time on The End of Time and Other Bothers. Welcome to the past. Hello, Mr. Minotaur. So as you all know, The End of Time happened because you experienced it. Lousy Minotaur, take some of this. Ow. You're taking me to the Academy of the Fallen? You flip open the file. You are looking at your kindergarten scores. You see photos of you. So Darcy's brain about three minutes ago said, you could stay here, but I'm leaving. The stole. Uh, I'm sorry? Most magic was removed from your future. However, in this time, magic does exist. Long live Boltius. So you, you, you're you from Balgamar? Of course, we're still in Balgamar. We're just in the old timey part. There's no Boltius! Long live Boltius! Oh, no, yes, long live Boltius, except Boltius hasn't been born yet. Traditionally, we would have 500 to 600 knights working to fight and hold back the shattering. However, it all failed. We need you three. Uh. And then Blad just passes out. (laughs) Well, I think that went pretty well, actually. Fun's over. Time to save the world. We enter the Academy of the Fallen, gliding down empty corridors, worn smooth by many feet. We work our way up the stairwell to the second floor, where we hear a murmuring of voices coming from behind a door labeled Briefing Room. Inside, we see Strand Jankings taking Blatt, Egerton, and Darcy through a series of endless paperwork. They are in shock as they fill out form after form. A few minutes later, she opens the door and leads the three of them out, each hefting their issued clothing and following dutifully behind her. She leads them up the stairs and down the hall to the dormitories. One of the dormitory doors is open, and inside is a large room filled with beds and cots stacked on top of each other. Five of the beds have been made. The rest are empty. The room feels stale and cold, but there is a window looking out at the night, and the roar of the waterfall can be heard in the distance. So you're standing in a dormitory holding some clothes. You're holding a book. That suit cost me a week's salary, and now I'm wearing what appears to be pajamas that in no way is keeping my wings in check. I don't have a home. All that furniture I bought is now at some future point, frozen in time, or perhaps doesn't exist at all. You guys see how pretty it is outside, though? I don't understand how you can be so positive did you hear anything she said the world is ceasing to exist no she said the world did cease to exist but then we came back but do you believe all that stuff do do you think we're supposed to what save the world well i i've got my fairy cake so that helps you know what i I could actually use a fairy cake. cake? Yeah, please. please. Why don't you start with a half? They're pretty strong. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I start munching on the fairy cake. Awesome. So this is our first use of a move. So fairy cakes actually have a move associated with Mm -hmm. them, and you had some damage at one point. Mm -hmm. Um, I had one damage. When I feed someone one of my fairy cakes, sweets or nom noms, I roll plus wisdom, and on a plus 10, I heal for, well, yeah, we'll do this first. On a 10, 10 plus. Ooh, Ooh, there it is. Plus wisdom. Plus wisdom, so that's 10. Okay, so you heal. I heal for D8 plus wisdom. So that's six plus one. So I max. only need one. So Darcy is at max. This, this cake was amazing. So that move, you just have to read what happens if you had rolled a seven to nine. Um, it comes with a cost. They are either drunken, blind, tripping, etc. That would have been fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're still healed. Okay. <clears throat> Eating this cake, like give us that. Because it's a really powerful experience. Wow. I, I, I've never actually had a fairy cake. This is, this is really good. And Why, thank you. Like, yeah, you're, do you make them yourself? I do, and I infuse all of them with a little bit of love. I can feel that. I'm glad. Thank you. Let's hug it out. Okay. 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 
There it is. And I sort of oh. cling to him a little longer than maybe is comfortable. Okay. 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 That's that's okay. 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 Now. Thanks. Okay. Good. Good stuff. Thank you. If you excuse me, I'll be vomiting in the corner in cheer terror. <laughs> I'm gonna sleep on this side of the room. Is that a bit of a sandwich? Where'd you get that? <sighs> About fifteen hundred years from now. <laughs> okay, you know what? I I just think we just need to sleep on this, right? Because this is this is a lot of information to take in, and uh, I'm hoping that when we wake up in the morning, none of this will have happened, and we'll have never met each other, and I could just go back to ladling in Pescor zesty golden soup to people who couldn't care less about me, okay? Seems that the fairy cakes may have taken her down a dark path. So, just to sum up, you give presentations of some kind, and you, my good lady, ladle cheap foodstuffs out to people. I do. Yes, yes. I worked in a filing room. Thank heavens we three have been chosen to be the saviors of the entire multiverse. Oh, Loxen, preserve us. If we go to sleep now, we'll be about 10 hours closer to the future event in which all reality ceases to exist. Well, good night. Good night. Good night. The End of Time and Other Bothers, an improvised fantasy role-playing game set in the world of Alba Salix. Your game master is Sean Howard, with players Michael Howie, Marisa King, and Carter Siddle. Episode 3, The Academy of the Fallen, Part 2. So, morning is coming up, and the dining room is on the first level back where you guys went to admissions, first came in the building. And it's basically a cafeteria setup. So there's a big wall at the end with a grate that's down. And you see this imp, this little imp running around, like trying to jump up and push the grate up. And he's just jumping up at the grate. Uh, I can't reach. Maybe you should go help your little friend. I'll go help my little friend, so... I walk up to the amp and I ask, is there anything that you require in any way? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, please. Trying to serve won't open. So I reach up and I open it all the way up. Oh, thank you. Oh, your Eva ship. Oh, I bow before you. I am not worthy. And he's like literally clinging to your feet. Uh, the fact that you were unable to raise the grate is none of my concern, but thank you. Do you have any Hot Pockets in this era? I am but scum beneath your boots, your evil ship! I am but your faithful servant! I, I admit you do come from an earlier time, and perhaps your education is not quite up to snuff to my era, but that does not mean that you're the scum beneath my feet. Please, do you have any toast? Any any potatoes toast. at all? Oh, yes, your evil ship, I have toast! Yes! And he runs all the way around, and you see him hop up onto, like, a bench, then hop down and like push it on wheels over and then hop back up and like grab some toast and then hop down. Like he's right there, but he runs all the way around the door and like comes and holds it out on open hands for you. Your, your evil ship's amigo brings you toast. Plate would be nice. Oh yes! And he runs back and you take the toast or no? I, I don't know, he'll take okay, it back. So he runs him. back with the toast, runs around, pushes the chair, holding the toast in his mouth, um, <laughs> climbs up, grabs a plate, puts the toast on the plate, climbs back down, comes running out of breath. Oh, Smiggle, sorry, sir, toast on plate. You are evil ship. Perhaps now a plate with toast that hasn't been in your mouth. I don't know how you usually do it here. Do you have any of the- Oh, yes! Sneagle fixed! And he <laughs> takes his hands and rips off the piece that was in his mouth and holds the plate back up for you. <laughs> I take the plate and smile politely, then 
turn immediately around and walk towards one of the tables to sit down to eat. Oh, I hope he's happy. And he runs back around and climbs up on his thing and is looking. He's waiting to serve somebody. I, I, I walk over and I say, hello there. Do you have any Impescor uh, original? Hello. Hello. Uh, hello. I, 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 I'm right here. What? Down, down. You have to, you're, you're up high. He Look leans down. forward. He's like, oh, Yes. Oh, what can I, what can Snaggle get you? See, it's Snaggle, not Smaggle. <laughs> I fixed it. What can Snaggle get you? Uh, could I get an Impresco plane, please? Yes. And he runs, slides the, the thing over, gets another piece of toast, waits, slides it over, puts it on a plate, leans over, and then just drops it. Oh, oh that's all. No, I got it. We're good. We're okay. Um... This 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 toast, I, I'll enjoy the toast. I've not had toast in a long time. I don't think I've ever had toast. But do you perhaps have any impresco? I, you know, I'll take zesty. Another another one, another impresco. Yeah, I, this this is not impresco. This is toast. Mm, no, it's not. Yeah, I I believe that this is in fact bread that has been heated. <laughs> no, it's not. Okay, well, thank you very much for the impresco. It's very kind of you, and I look forward to sampling it. I'll, I'm going, I'm going to go sit with my friend and eat it. Wait, is he your friend? Well, we've not known each other too long, but I like to think <gasps> we're friends. Wait, wait! He scoops some oatmeal and he grabs some fruit and he puts it on a plate, leans over, and drops it. Oh, I, I got, I got that one too. You're quick, but I'm, I'm pretty quick too. Oh, you, you, you tell his evil ship, snaggle his friend too. Oh, okay. I don't think he's all that evil. I think he's maybe just a little cranky, not much of a morning person. He was mumbling something about files and a furnace in his sleep. But I'm sure that he wants to be your friend, too. He does seem very, very kind. His name is Blatt, by the way. Blatt. 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 Yes, Blatt. 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 Yes. Blatt. Yes, just like that, Blatt. Blatt. But only one Blatt. at a time. Blatt. 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 Just, just the one. Okay. Blatt. I'm going to go eat this now. Thank Blatt. you. Blatt. But 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 was that no blat blat blat? And at this point, I appear in the doorway, looking like gloom personified. So my normal spiky hair has drooped. I slept in my cadet clothes that I was given yesterday, so they're all rumpled and everything, and my shoulders are all hunched. And I just say, "The world has still ended." Do you have any snappies? Huh? Snappies? It takes some toast and it snaps it. Snappies! And uh, and it goes to give it to you and it goes, oh, blat, blat, blat. And it runs and gets a plate, puts it on the plate, and then gets back up on it. It's like climbing up and off of this little ladder. And it gets on this ladder and it like pushes it over no, to you. No, no, this is toast crumbs. This is not snappies. Mm, yes, snappies are this wafer-like thing where when you add water, they pop and crackle and they expand this is toast no it's not yes it is it's a snappy okay and i just take it and i shuffle over to the table where the others are and i say they don't have snappies <laughs> no but here you you can have my toast i i have toast not like mine you don't I see our old friend on the roof at the end of time. The hunter to some. Greg the Minotaur to others. My Grishka. I watched him stare down his end. The end of us all. But unlike us, he chose to face it alone. When my Grishka ran... I broke. The river floods and changes course. Cities underwater. Death walks the land. I risk everything. Perhaps we are doomed. Perhaps I am too weak. It's the beginning of the middle of the end of time and other bothers. 
Hi, I'm Michael Howie. We want to thank you for taking the time to listen to The End of Time and Other Bothers. Oh, oh, oh Snaggle wants to thank you too. Yeah, and if you can, please review our show on iTunes. I, if you liked it, that is. I mean, don't leave a review if you didn't like it. Well, some people don't like Snaggle. No, I, I'm sure it's but, not you, Snaggle. It's, it's, it's probably Carter. Snaggle likes everyone, Michael. Now, folks, feel free to share episodes with your friends and spread the word with the hashtag Other Bothers. Oh, Snaggle likes hashtags. Snaggle cooks them with rice and gravy and snappies. Please consider supporting us on Patreon. $2 goes a long way, and there are a lot of great perks. Just go to patreon.com slash Alba Salix. Alba Salix. Alba Salix, A-L-B-A-S-A-L-I-X. C-P-X. Hey, Eli, why couldn't I record why? this spot with Marisa or Carter? Were they busy today or something? Oh, Snaggle, very popular. Snaggle has agent. Do you have agent, Michael? Uh, no, I don't. But ha speaking of agents, have you ever read uh, Lord of the Rings? Mm. Maybe seen the movie? No. What about The Hobbit? There's just there's something about you that feels pretty familiar to me. Mm. Maybe. All I'm saying is your name is one letter off from being a major Tolkien character. Snaggle was in the movies. I, well, no, not you particularly, Snago, but someone an awful lot like you, and it feels like someone may have taken some shortcuts, and I'm a little worried that you're going to set a bad precedent for the show. Would Snago get my own trailer? Oh, I want a trailer, Michael! We'll have to put that into the budget, maybe, for season two, but people, if they support Patreon, maybe we can set that as one of the goals. P. X. C. All right, I'm done for the day. No, I'm going to my trailer. Mangishka, wake up. Wake up, please. Greg. Oh, where? Oh, where? Where? Thank goodness you are alive. You are safe. Nanka? Yes, it is me. Am I dreaming? Grishka, no. You are alive. You are safe in my heart. What? The, the last thing I remember is... Running like prey. You were prey. You were the prey, Grishka. It is what they wanted. It was what they wanted me to do, to let it happen. But I could not let it happen. Not to you. But the plan, Ananka, at what cost? I don't know. I don't know, my Grishka, what cost. I just know that this cannot happen. It cannot. Anonka, what have you done? No, don't answer. Take my hands. It is done. We will find a way. I know we will. We will make it happen together. But first, we need to find me some pants. Grishka, where we are going, we don't need pants. We're back in the Academy of the Fallen, and we're moving down the main corridor, heading towards the cafeteria, but we're moving quite slowly, almost like we're shuffling. And that's because we're following Cyrus the Halfling, a grumbling man just shy of four feet tall, with a pipe in the corner of his mouth, and he's barefoot, and his slacks drag a little on the ground as he shambles forward. Cyrus do this, Cyrus do that. Always another errand for Cyrus. <clears throat> if you will, lend me your attention. It's time for your assessment. Go, go, go. Go, heroes. If you'll just come this way, please. I assume this is our physical assessment to see if we're healthy enough to eventually be killed in some horrible manner. I ladle soup for a living. What flavor is a soup? Original, zesty, hearty flavored, and golden. I never really like having zesty in the morning. That's fair. 
Original tends to be my go-to. So that oh. excuse me. Uh, if you all just get your seats, thank you. There's three seats, and it's a giant room, and it is sort of like a opal color, but the walls sort of have the like an iridescent hue to them. Very pretty. And there's just three seats. And you see a, a man in a lab coat who is holding a clipboard. All right, fine. Sit down. If everyone could just have a seat, we'll get started right away. I slouch into my seat. I slide into mine. I sit down into mine comfortably and take out my notebook. I am super excited because this is my first assessment. Whew. I'm sure it's going to go fine. Uh, I've had a few hundred years to prepare. So... Uh, what's going to happen is you're going to be going through a series of, let's say, experiments, and they're going to assess your abilities, your innate talent, and your strengths. Huh? Excellent. Are you experimenting on us? Well, not quite the response I was expecting, but yes, we'll, we'll carry on. I have yes. a question. Uh, you, oh, yes, okay. What was your name? Ziff. Thank you, Ziff. You're welcome. Now, uh, yes, we will be experimenting on you. Uh, you signed a waiver and a disclaimer yesterday. Uh, I wasn't told I was signing anything like that. Uh, it was in the admissions packet. I have it right here. He hold it up if you'd like to review your signature. No, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. So how this is going to work is um, each one of you is going to one at a time um, just enter the machine and uh, you are going to be assessed and then you will come back out and have a seat while the other two get assessed. It's very straightforward. And then we'll get your results and we'll get you right into class. So, uh, who's first? The fairy. I, oh, okay. Very good. Good, I, good, good, good. Okay. Come forward, come forward. All right, thank you. So, Egerton stands up, steps forward, and literally a wall just drops down right behind him. And you're in a much smaller room now, the two of you. And Egerton... You hear a voice, it's Ziff, and it's sort of echoing off the walls. Okay, uh, just give me a second, Egg, uh, it's Egerton, right? That is correct, sir. Right. The room lights up, and you are in a royal cathedral, and light is coming down out of one point, way, way up, and coming right down on a stone that has a sword coming out of it. Oh. Neat. Okay, so your first test is ready. You uh, just need to draw the sword. Okay. So I take out my notebook, and I sit down cross-legged with one of my pencils. <laughs> hold up my hands to try and get some perspective measurements and start sketching. And, you know, I was never very good at drawing, but I, I thought that it was something I should probably practice anyway. And you'll see sometimes in my notebooks if you go through them little sketches of things. You Mostly it's the buildings. You outside, you hear a... And... Well, it's okay. It's okay. You got. There's a lot of tests. Don't worry. Stay in there, Egerton. And suddenly the room changes, and you are on a ledge against a wall. You can feel the wall behind you. And 40 feet away on the far side of the room is another platform, and you see Ziff standing there, and he waves at you. Hi, Ziff. Hey, Egerton. In between you is basically roiling magma. Be careful, Egerton. Don't don't lose your footing. Okay. And he's messing around with a contraption, and it looks like sort of a cannon. And he presses a lever on it and steps back, and he goes, okay, so we're going to start at one per second. And suddenly the cannon fires an arrow straight at you. Uh-oh. Well, I, I, I duck. Okay, so you duck down, it like pings off the wall above you, but you almost lose your balance when you duck because it's a pretty oh. narrow ledge you're on, and it falls down, and suddenly it's firing another arrow. I have a question. Okay, the arrow strikes you in the leg. Ow! <laughs> well, that's not good. It's going up to three per second why, now. Why, why is this a thing? And now the thing is starting to rotate left and why, right. Why and I have a question. And, and, uh, Another arrow strikes you in the shoulder. Ow! Why the? Why are you doing this? 
you do manage to dodge a bunch of them by my say, even with uh, one in your shoulder and one in your leg. You're doing not bad dodging their firing. Okay, you're doing not bad, Egerton. We're gonna go up to five per second. Why would you do more? Try not to get hit. I don't want to get hit. It hurts when it's, I get hit. Oh, he puts it up to full, and it's like chuk, 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 chuk. you guys outside hear a. Ah! And then you hear, <laughs> okay, the room goes dark. Sorry about that, Egerton. Uh, you know, see if you can, well, maybe leave the one in your shoulder, but you might break off the one on your leg. Okay. You're down five hit points. Jeez. Shocker. Okay, so the lights come back up, and you are sitting in a classroom in one of those uncomfortable little wooden chairs with the little half. Extra uncomfortable half. from the arrow shafts. <laughs> Extra uncomfortable from the arrow shafts. So you have uh, 60 seconds before the candle burns down and ignites the oil. <laughs> Which candle would that be? Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. And you hear a lever get thrown, and all of a sudden oil starts pouring out across the floor down towards you, seeping down towards you, and a candle appears in the center of the floor and is slowly burning down. Rather rapid for a candle. I don't think you have our best interests at heart right now, sir. Your time has started. Focus oh. on your test. Oh. oh, okay. Question number one. I get up and I walk over and extinguish the candle. <laughs> you, you just hand goes through it, but it burns you. Oh, that, why? I, you're losing time. Okay, Question okay, number okay, one. Okay, 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 okay. Griffin is to Eagle as the golden Caramont is to... <laughs> Raptor. <laughs> Bing! The substance most accepting of transmutation is A, lead, B, iron, C, copper, D, gold. Gold. Bing! What is the boiling point of an egg in pyrometers? <laughs> we never learn metric, darn it. <laughs> and, and the candle stops. Hey, I think we found your thing here, Egerton. That so, was pretty good. Could I have a bandage, please? <laughs> Latin Darcy, Egerton suddenly appears in front of you. Describe what they see, Egerton. I have an arrow through my shoulder. <laughs> I have a broken arrow in my leg. And I have another one in my stomach. But I'm still smiling. Sweet Loxon, what happened to you? I, I... Ziff is suddenly there. Hup. No cheating! Okay, who's next? The demon told me he wants to go next. What? what? Hey! Yes, perfect! <laughs> Boom! Darcy... You are now sitting alone as Egerton crawls out the door past you on his way to the nurse's office. Blatt, you're in a seat in a classroom, and you've got a little writing desk that you're crammed into. Oh, wait, I almost forgot again. You hear a button press, and you see oil start to like flood the room, and a candle appears. It's slowly burning down. Okay, so you have 60 seconds before the place goes up in flames, so you just need to uh, answer as many of these questions as you can. Let's go. What color are the following words? Grass. Green. Mm -hmm. Sky. Blue. Fear. Uh, uh, silver? Clothing. Clothing can be many colors. I need a color. Rainbow? Empathy. Purple. Wow, that was amazingly well done. That's awesome. Wow, you're the first one to ever get that one. I have no idea what I just did. <laughs> <laughs> the room goes black, opens up again, and you are you literally on the edge of a precipice, like you're about to step off a doorway, but there's, n there's like nothing down there. It's just water. Oh, oh watch your step. Watch your step. Uh -huh. Uh, so, Blatt, you are basically, uh, the do a door is behind you, but it's closed, and there's a tiny little, like, six-inch lip that you're standing on, and in front of you is water, your favorite, and there are dark shapes moving in the water, and there are stilts, little, like, one, maybe two-inch by two-inch pieces of wood that are sticking up out of the water every six or seven feet haphazardly, and on the far side, you see an open door. 
Uh, so uh, what's going to happen is uh, I'm going to press this button and the lip you're standing on is slowly going to go away. And so all you got to do is just leap from little stick to stick stilt um, to the other side. I was hoping I wouldn't have to do this. I begin unbuttoning my cadet shirt and I toss it away into the water below. Oh my, you, you definitely keep in shape. I unfurl my wings and I simply fly. Oh, but... To oh. the opposite oh. side. <laughs> okay. Do you have flight? You have you have glide, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. So there's a silence, and, and then you hear you hear a bing outside. He's like, "No, no, that's not fair. That's oh, well, I'll adjust that later." Um. Oh, well, okay. Well, no flying next time. Okay. And the room goes dark. I'm gonna need a shirt. The room comes up light. There's no shirt. You are in an outdoor marketplace. You're just standing in this marketplace suddenly, and there's yelling and vendors, and you're holding what appears to be a cart-like device that's made out of a metal cage on four tiny wheels and a push bar. And to your right are three goblins, each with their own sort of push carty device. And one of them gives you the finger. <laughs> And you hear, Welcome to the Super Bizarre Sweeps! Every contestant gets 90 seconds to follow the red path around the square. Be the first back here with the most expensive items in your cart. And remember, anything goes! And a horn goes, Whoa! And the goblins all rush forward with their carts, following this path through the bazaar. I quickly begin to follow one of the uh, goblin carts, not knowing what in this area is worth anything at all, just to see what they're doing. Okay, you see like one of the goblins, yeah, and he grabs something from a vendor and throws it in the cart, and another one basically rams the f guy in first place, and he screams, and that their carts get all tangled up, and there's just one cart now in front of you, and he's like racing towards this one booth. I pick up my cart, and I begin racing towards the first booth. Picking up? So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it. Racing towards uh, the uh, goblin heading to the one stall, and when I get to him, I ignore all of the merchandise, I pick the goblin up, and I place him inside the cart. Okay, roll to five danger. Eight. Okay, so you can grab the goblin, but... You, you'd have to let go of the car. Like, like you can grab the goblin, but the other guys are, like, getting back up, and they're going to pass you. Okay. So I pick up the goblin. And they race past. And I immediately run after the last car to see if I can grab onto it. Okay, so you're just carrying the goblin without your cart. Yes. Okay. Yes. The goblin's like, hey! Hey, hey! He's, like, still trying to grab things from passing vendors <laughs> and trying to, like, hold on to them. Hey! No! What are you doing? I allow him to grab stuff. Fine! <laughs> go ahead! <laughs> Technically, this is mine. Okay, so you catch up to the next guy because he stopped and he's pouring all the stuff from one vendor who's yelling at him. Hey, what are you doing? He's pouring it all into his cart. I take the goblin that I'm holding. I put him inside the cart and I begin pushing the cart, grabbing at the second goblin. Okay. <laughs> Wait a minute. You're trying to push the cart. You shove a goblin in it. You're trying to push the cart and grab another goblin? Yeah. So that I can put that second goblin into the cart. Okay, I think you do that, but you wouldn't be pushing the cart. Like, you throw a goblin in, you can then try and grab another goblin. Okay, yes, yes. So I'll put the first goblin in, I'll try to grab the second goblin. Okay, so roll again. Eleven. Oh my god, I was so gonna have the one goblin climb out while you put the other one in. Okay, you do it, what happens? I grab the second goblin. Hey! Come here, you! What? What? what are you doing? I throw him into the cart on top of the first goblin, Ooh. hoping to keep them both down, and then I begin pushing the cart with the two goblins and whatever they manage to grab from the stalls. Okay, so in this time, the, the goblin in front of you reached back, so you hear the bong, but then you race in right after, okay, to the finish line. So you see Ziv appear with his clipboard, and he's sort of looking at you, and he's looking at the cart, and he's like, uh, uh... What what, what 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 was that, Blatt? You can't put a price on the lives of goblins. One of the goblins is like, you tell him! <laughs> and whatever this necklace is that he grabbed, <laughs> this might be worth something as well. <laughs> and, a, and a sound goes, boom! And it's like, well, it's most, most unusual, but oh, yes, I, I guess you passed. Okay. All right, so the room goes dark. 
Okay, Darcy, you hear ding, and Blatt suddenly appears, looking a little befuddled. He's naked from the waist up. His wings are fully unfurled, and he's holding a necklace. Sounds like you did very well. I, I don't like to reveal my wings in public. Why not? They're cool. Please don't look at me. <laughs> Okay, Ziff appears. He's like, uh, okay, Darcy, you're last. Let's go. I walk back into the room at this point. Okay. So you come limping half limp. Well, you probably would have healed yourself with the fairy yeah, cakes. Yeah, a little sore, uh, roll, though. Roll the fairy cakes. Roll fairy cakes. That's an eight plus wisdom. Total of nine. You're blind, but you're fully healed. <laughs> <laughs> Happens every once in a while. It's a side effect, right? Wears off. Too many what? fairy cakes. <laughs> what? Yes, I'm... Over here. Blatt, I, 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 I'm feeling a bit better, but I, I'm, I, Blatt, is that you? Blatt, what, what were these big leathery things? That, please, never mind the leathery things. You don't need to be touching. It's very touching. soft, yes, but warm, no, too. You don't need to manhandle what you're feeling. No, quit grabbing! <laughs> sorry, sorry, I, I've just never felt something so, so luxurious. Uh, yes, have, <laughs> have you gone fairy cake blind? <laughs> I mixed the fairy cake with the potion the healer gave me. And, you, you know, sometimes when you, you ride the bull, you get thrown <laughs> off. Okay, so Mies, you suddenly appear in a, a room and you're alone. And you hear Ziff's voice echoing all around you. He's like, okay, so uh, we're going to get this started. Here we go. Just do your best, Darcy. Okay. Oh, there's the spirit. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Okay, and you hear some levers. And then all of a sudden it goes totally dark and comes up and you're in a carnival, like a future carnival, like Balgamar carnival. <gasps> I'm back. And uh, you see a man and ev everything just sort of like, no matter which way you turn, you keep being drawn back to this. It's like a dream. One of those games where you have to swing the sledgehammer to mm -hmm. ring the bell. Yep. And he's like, step up, step up, try your strength. What about you, young lady? I think I have to. Here you go! And he hands you the sledgehammer, and he pretends that he almost drops it. Ha, 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 and a crowd's gathering. Here you go! And I grab the hammer. Swing it! Show these men what ladies of Balgamar have! And I sort of mechanically just swing it over my shoulder and bring it down on the thing. <laughs> so the little thing goes... Boop. It's just sort of silent. He's like, come on, no, come on, you can do better than that. Come on, give it a swing. <sighs> so then I pick it up again and I give it a bit of a harder swing. And <sighs> then I do it again. You hear Ziff go, uh, this is the part where everyone's supposed to be laughing. Uh, that's really bad. I right. can't believe that you've brought me to your stupid past and trap me in this stupid made-up world to test some sort of, what, strength or something that I have? When I get out of here, I'm going to take this hammer, yeah. and I am going to picture your head, uh. and I'm going to do this to it. And I take that hammer, and I bring it down with all my might. Roll plus strength. I'm a nine, so I have no plus anything, right? Okay. No. Ten. What happens... I swing that hammer and the stone or whatever it is just soars right up and keeps going and breaks through the top of it and goes soaring over the people and the crowds cheer and there's a new champion in imaginary carnival world. That was really good, Darcy, though I'm a little afraid. You I should be. You should be. Outside, you guys hear bing, bing, bing. And then you see a bell come flying up and land <laughs> on the ground. Clang, clang, clang. Okay, so Mies, you are standing on, uh, like you suddenly just almost lose your balance. You're standing on a tiny lip, maybe five inches. It's sticking out from the wall. And even with it, stretching forward for about 30 feet are just gleaming nails, like sharp all up, about an inch apart, all the way across. And you see there's a platform that's level with it and a door on the far side. And you hear Ziff go, uh, I don't think I'm going to say anything. I just, you got to get to the door. And then it goes silent. You were in so much trouble, Ziff. So, I have delicate little human feet. <laughs> so I do not like where this is going. 
but I know for this to end, I just have to get across it. The the lip beneath your feet starts to slowly retract. Mm. So I leap onto the nails and I just run on the ball of my feet as much as I can. And the whole time I'm going, ah, 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 I am going to do so many horrible things to you, Zeev. You guys hear that. <laughs> you hear it. And there's oil starting to flood the room. What is going on? And a candle appears. Ah, uh, you're not going to like this one. Uh, that, that's a flammable, flammable, flammable uh, oil. And the candle, uh, you have 60 seconds. Uh, just answer as many questions as you can on the test in front of you. Uh, first question. Um, uh Wagon A leaves Paradox with two horses oh, pulling I it. I hate these puzzles! <laughs> two hours later, Wagon B leaves Paradox traveling in the same direction with three horses pulling it. How far from Paradox will the second wagon overtake the first? Wherever your head ends up. <laughs> Bing! <laughs> uh, what is the boiling point of an egg in pyrometers? Ten. Bing! Calculate the solution to the following equation. And the wall in front of you, the, the chalkboard, just fills with this massive equation. Well, if you take the uh, hypotenuse of the core shimati and the snig and fligen, it's going to be the 1 over the 3 or the 5 15 seconds. Three, and it's uh, 324. Bing! Darcy, you appear. She, her feet are blood. <laughs> this hurts so much. What hurts so much? My feet! I had to walk across a bed of nails! Did you get shot a bunch? Oh, you got some arrows! Look at my feet! I can't see your feet. Ugh. He's I sit down? gone cake blind. Have you not got a shirt yet? <laughs> no. You hear Ziv's voice. I, I was going to come out and congratulate you all, but I'm a little afraid of Darcy right now. So uh, if you'll just go across the hall to your classroom, the adjunct has set up your first class. I can't walk. I can't see. I, I'm a little cold. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so if you guys want to carry Darcy up to the healer uh, on the second floor, then you could go to your classroom. Thank you. We're going to cut to a little bit later in time. Darcy's feet are bandaged. Uh, Blatt, you found another shirt. Excellent. Do you want to cut slits in it? No, you want to keep that stuff. Hidden away. Under wraps. I'm a man <laughs> with red skin. I'm not a demon. And you can see now again, roughly, a little bit. Roughly. It's a little fuzzy right now. Fuzzy uh, is fun, Egerton, though. But yeah, it's a good time. And you guys have filed into your classroom. It's quite a large classroom. Probably could fit like 50 to 60 students or what have you in it. There are chairs that have built-in desks. There's a chalkboard, and on the chalkboard is written Ego Plebium. And on three desks are three name tags, one for each of you. So Darcy, Blatt, and Egerton. There's a desk with, with your names on a little card. And on each desk are some books. You all sitting down? We are. Okay. Yes. So Darcy, <gasps> you have two books. One has a sword on it, and one has a holy symbol on it. Ooh. Blatt, you have two books. One has horns on it, and one has a sword on it. Egerton. You have eight books. You have one book. I only have one book. Everyone else gets it. But you know, I only need one book, because it's a better book. And it has a plant symbol on it. Ooh. I open up the book with the holy symbol on it. It's like written in some weird hieroglyphs. Can any of you read your books? I open my book and try to read it. Same thing. It's just weird. After attempting to read it, I turn and say, no, I cannot. Well, this is the best classroom ever. I open up the horn book. Same thing. It's just strange lines and almost like back when you were filing where you would have seen circuit diagrams and stuff. It's almost like that. I hold the book away from me as far as I can. See if I can make out a pattern. No. <laughs> I put the book down and then rest my head on my desk. <laughs> <laughs> I think the books are broken. Shouldn't we have a teacher? Is there a chalkboard? Yes, something is written on it. But does it say ego 
Plebeian. 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 Mm-hmm. Plebeian. 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 That's what I said. Does anyone speak Latin? <laughs> Let's just say my ego is feeling quite plebeian at the moment. <laughs> Hello, is anyone here? We're in a classroom and we don't know what we're doing. Ego plebeium. Your books both glow. I think it's a magic word. There's no such thing as a magic word. I know, but but look at my books. Oh, <gasps> they're glowing. Yes. Okay. Well, what was the what was the what was, what was the word? Ego plebeium. Both your books light up again. I look at my book and say, Ego plebeium. It lights up. <gasps> Magic. So apparently saying my ego is feeling rather plebeium wasn't quite <laughs> correct. You have to say them together, Blatt. Hold the horn book up to my face <laughs> and I whisper, Ego plebeium. It lights up. So then I... Which book do you open? The holy symbol book. Okay. For me, yep. obviously. I open up the horn book. Okay. I wasn't given a choice. <laughs> Blatt, you are suddenly sucked into your book, like ripped apart into the book in pieces. It's sort of painful. Jeez. And it's sort of painful? <laughs> <laughs> As ripping apart is. <laughs> And suddenly you are standing on the desolate plains and fire is roaring up every once in a while out of different pockets. And you see a full-fledged demon, not a half-demon, striding forward toward you. And it says, I see you are the new plebe. I see, yes. Old timey demon nonsense. My friend, I come from a future point in history where our people have moved away from this entire Hades. Ooh, look at me. Aren't I so strong? Draw your sword. And an axe peers in its hands, giant, like seven foot long axe. Or be struck down. Again, I come from a point where Medieval mano a mano fisticuffs is looked down upon. Also, I lack the sword that you demand that I draw before you cleave me. Oh, this is gonna be fun. And he cleaves you in half with the ax and you rip apart into a million pieces and then you feel yourself pull all the way back together again and you're standing on the lost forbidden plains fires coming out of pockets to your left and your right and you see a full-fledged demon striding towards you oh this is gonna be so much fun the end of time and other bothers an improvised fantasy role-playing game set in the world of alba salix your game master is Sean Howard, with Carter Siddle as Blatt, Marisa King as Darcy, and Michael Howey as Egerton. You also heard Maggie Makar as Ananka. Additional material and sound design by Eli McElvey. Story consultant, Laura Packer. Game consultant, Stephen Smith. Join us on Patreon for early access to episodes, behind-the-scenes information, and lots more. Find out how at otherbothers.com. Montage. Do, 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 do. Roll for montage. Yeah, that's a good roll for montage. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Can we have a Hughes roll instead? What's a Hughes roll? So, a John Hughes roll. Oh.